live chat. I remembered. Change it to live chat. All right. I'm going to just wait for people to show up. And I got to try and log in. Okay, stop. Uh, let's see. My channel on YouTube. Hello there, Melissa. Hi, Pam. Hi, Jerry. Can I switch to... Yay. Okay. I look all washed out. When I don't have mascara on, I look just like blonde. Very blonde. How's everybody doing? <laughs> you need organization help. I've been trying to help you. You have a lot of what you need. Now you just need to use it. <laughs> Nancy's driving. Hmm. Christmas. Probably won't wait too long because I'm sure a lot of people are just going to catch this on a replay. So I'm just going to hang out. Hello, Cheryl. For a few minutes. I don't have any happy mail. Nobody sent me anything since the last time, so. Maybe Leo can read the messages for Nancy. Just hanging out, reading comments. Hello, hello, hello. Waiting for people to show up. The Organize Me ink shelf. Now I'm curious. What is the Organize Me ink shelf? Do I dare go down this rabbit hole? Probably not. I mean, I won't be phased by it is what I'm saying. <laughs> Organize. Or let's go right. Organize me ink shelf. Don't know if I got it right. Oh, okay. I've got Lowe's. Is that Lowe's? Oh, hold on. Let me go back to my comments and I need to change that to live chat. Let's see. I'm trying to talk myself out of the Organize Me ink shelf. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, send me happy mail. I love happy mail. Thank you. Um, yeah, is it the, um, Pam, is it the one at Lowe's? There's an Organize Me. Um, oh, I did, I didn't do ink. Hold on. Mm. Organize more? Are you talking about organize more? Maybe that's what she's talking about. Because that would be a typical um, organizer for ink pads. So, just curious. Alright, well let's get started. Um, so it says, some of you have noticed, I have all my, and this is only, I don't know, probably a little over half of my binders and stuff because the other ones are over here on another bookshelf. So I have all my stuff organized by, I don't want to say all my stuff. Let me reverse. So I have all of my dies, like my frames, my sentiment dies, my stamps, my um, hot foil plates, my um, word dies, what else? 
sentiments, like actual like clip art and sentiments, cut out sentiments and stuff. I have those all organized in binders. The only thing I don't have organized in binders is, um, hi Susie, hi Meg, hi Sherry, I don't think I said Sherry. The only thing I don't really have in binders is my stencils and my background stamps, unless they are in a binder that is specific to something. Like I have a Southwestern binder because I don't have a lot of Southwestern stamps, but if I, I wanted to keep them all together. Um, so I have like embossing folders. Oh, and embossing folders. It's another thing. Those are in art bins or other bins. Um, so I will keep like all my Southwestern stuff. So if it's an embossing folder or background stamp, um, <laughs> hi, Barbara. Uh, so if I have any of that stuff that's specific to Southwesterns, it's in the binder. Um, so that's pretty much where I have all my stuff stored. If you want to see where I store my like embossing folders or my background stamps or my stencils, I can show you that, but it's not in binders. So we'll start with that. All right. So let's see. We have, hey, Leanne. Okay. My chat is being goofy. All right. So we've got um, quite a few joining. So Jerry is my admin or my moderator right now. So Jerry, if I miss a question, just, just send me a message and, or if there are questions that you guys have, go ahead and ask them in the chat. And if I don't see them, then, um, Jerry can message me and kind of keep track so that I can keep track of the questions and make sure I answer them. Okay. I'm going to go top down because I'm going to be pulling binders down and I'm going to be showing you stuff. So it's really not going to be easy for me to hold up a binder. Um, it's a lot of pressure, whatever, get over it. You'll be fine. Or you can tag me. You can tag S and R creations, S and R, just type at S and R and then you'll, it'll pop up and you can tag me so that I'll see the question. Um, all right. So I'm going to just get started. I'm going to go over what I've got. Again, if you guys have questions as stuff goes on, just ask them. We'll get to them. Okay. All right. So let me go top down. <clears throat> Sleep. Okay, flip. There we go. I will rotate my device this way because I want. <clears throat> Don't you yell at me? Okay. I changed my tabletop. I like it. I have post it notes because Nancy told me I needed to. All right, I'm gonna move the chair out of the way. Okay, so the first one, we'll just go with um, just generic dies. So my frames and stuff. I'm gonna go up higher so you guys can see. Okay, perfect, you can see the whole binder. All right. Well, thank you, Meg. It's um, contact paper or a uh, shelf liner. So Amazon. Oh, also, um, shoot, hold on a sec. Let me, give me a minute. I'm going to share um, in the FSC. Let me edit my post. Let's see if I can add the link. Edit post. Okay. Save. Okay, so I just put the link in the FSC. And after the live, not right now, because I don't want to stop what I'm doing. But after the live, I'll go ahead and also put um, some links in the description of the video so that you guys can see, um, you can go, you know, like there's links regarding um, like scrapbook.com and Ellen Hudson, um, my affiliate links. And then also I will put, hey, Tracy, I'm glad you got on. 
And I also put um, Nancy's Amazon shop because most of the supplies that I utilized are from Amazon. Um, so you guys can be able to get everything that I use. Okay, so this one, let's just start with the binder. So the basic binders, I have anything that's from like one and a half inches. I don't think I have any one inches. Yeah, one and a half inches all the way up to five inches. And I'll explain what I use for what. This one is, let's see what this one is. This one is a two and a half incher. I think this is probably one of the most, two and a half inches and three and a half inches are the most common ones that I used. So this one is for my dies. And this is what I ended up using for my labels. It is a little pocket that you, it's adhesive. So it just sticks on there and then it comes with blanks, but I went ahead and I just made my own in Word, Microsoft Word, and did little shapes, colored them the way I wanted them, used the font I wanted, and then filled it all out. And then I printed it on like a 65 pound cardstock and then put it through my scan and cut and scanned it and cut out my little shapes. So that's how I did my labels. How you organize it is going to be totally up to you how you use your stuff. I use my stuff based on, well, it all depends actually on what they are, but my dies, I use them based on like I have my scent and I have to break these up because I can't put all my dies in one binder because it's too heavy. So that's kind of what's going to dictate what size binder you use. But you have um, this one because it's all dies. It's all metal in here. So it's all going to be. Um, my sentiment frames and my basic frames. So I'll show you. The binders can get heavy. And if they do, then just put it in a smaller binder. Just break it up into, you know, multiple binders so that it's only as heavy as you want it to be. So this is my, um, like I said, sentiment frames and basic frames. So my sentiment frames, so like my banners and stuff like that, that's what it means. And hold on, I've got a glare, so let me see where that glare is coming from so you guys. Nope, not that one. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Let me turn this one back on and see if that helps at all. Nope, that gives glare. Okay, so we're going to go with that. Well, let me do one more. Okay, that's good. So, um, basic frames. So these are my sentiment frames. And what I've used is magnetic sheets. The magnetic sheets, I'm going to go through all the stuff that I used. Magnetic sheets, these are adhesive back magnetic sheets. I don't always use, I didn't always use the adhesive. This is actually just double-sided tape and stuff on here, but this is actually adhesive backed. So I could take this off and if I wanted to, if I could, there it goes. So these are adhesive backed. They're thicker, um, so they've got a really good stick. You have to be careful with whatever magnetic sheets you get because the thinner they are, the less grip they have, the less magnetic they are. So this is a really good magnetic sheet. It's, it's stiff. I don't want it to be really flimsy because if it's flimsy, these are all going to pop off. So that's one of the reasons why um, I got this one. This is probably what I used in the very beginning. I don't really use these anymore because these got a little pricey. However, Nancy did find um, Craftopia on Amazon has some that are non-adhesive backed because you really don't need the adhesive backed. I thought they would come in handy. It does and it doesn't. I mean, if you want to attach this to it you literally can just use a tape runner um so that's what i use but she found some on amazon and it's in her amazon shop she created a new category called organizational or organizing organizing so all the stuff that i'm going to be talking about is in there thank you nancy all right so this is basically what i started with was the thicker nice really thick however keep in mind too the more of these you have in a binder, the heavier it is. You're adding to the weight of everything with everything you add. Now, this is the most popular photo protector is what they're pretty much called. 
it's a two pocket and this pocket here is i think it's like seven inches by five so it's a seven by five inch pocket so you're gonna cut your magnetic sheets seven by five i also highly recommend using a piece of packing tape clear packing tape and just clear packing tape to close up every single one of these because if you're flipping through your stuff, this stuff will fly out. <laughs> it will come out of the pockets. It's not staying in there really. It, it, there's really nothing to hold it in there unless you have something that's a little bit wide um, and it's snug. But not everything is going to be that way. So I highly recommend doing that. The other thing, the reason why I recommend it is when you're flipping make sure that you are grabbing the page and not grabbing the pocket because these pockets are just plastic. And if you can see here, this one's already ripping. So what I do whenever that happens, I get a piece of packing tape and I reinforce it. Cause it'll happen. But the thing is, is if you have this closed off and I have a little tab. So when I create the little, what I do is pull off packing tape make a little tab on one end and these I go up you could go this way but I'll tell you why you don't want to do that I go up so I'll do this way now my tab is up here I can pull it down I can get my thing don't pull too hard because you're going to rip this off Get my thing out, close it up, and I can put my binder away and do what I need to do. The reason why I don't do this one this way is because, I'll just show you, if you put it this direction, and I'm trying to get it out, now it's going to run into that sticky part of the tape, and that's annoying. You know me, I don't like dealing with the tacky side of packaging and stuff. I usually just cut off the top and go in and out from the top, so that's the same thing. You're avoiding stuff sticking you've got free it's all open the other thing is the one on the top though that one I will do that direction because I can move it out of the way so that it's completely out of the way and I can get my stuff it's a little bit more difficult when it's right here and there's no place for it to go so just a few tips on that so this is the one <clears throat> This is the two pocket. You can buy the two pocket, the best money, you know, value for your money or whatever is to get like the hundred pack. And I just throw it in here because I use so that so many of them. It is BCW is the manufacturer and it's a two pocket, two pocket photo thing. And all these are basically for photo storage. So this is what I use the most commonly. I use this for stamps. I use it for dyes. I use it just depending on the size of whatever I'm utilizing. When I'm using the magnetic sheets, those are typically the what I use the most because it's just the easiest to, to manipulate and, and store and cut down. The other magnetic sheets that you can get, which I did get, They're thinner. So here I'll show you. There's a couple different ones. And these cut really easy using your guillotine trimmer. So these are the ones that are the adhesive backed. They're very stiff. They're pretty thick. I couldn't tell you what they are exactly. Um, but they are... This is the ones that... I don't know if Nancy linked these or not. They're pretty pricey. So, because again, we found the Craftopia ones and they're a little bit smaller. These are eight and a half by 11. The ones that she found are eight by tens, which is fine because you only need, only need a seven by five. So you're going to still cut off a, a little bit, but you're going to get two, two out of one. 
Okay. Sorry, I was just reading comments. Okay, so this is the one. So this is pretty, it's pretty thick. It's nice. And when you pull it out, you know, it's not going to pucker. I don't know what you want to call it. Bend where it's going to pop off the dies, which is great. But the more you have of these, the heavier your thing gets. So what I got was this is much more flimsy. It's not adhesive back because this is technically a magnetic vent cover. So for you, those of you who have their vents on the floor and in the wintertime, you don't have, you know, like your heater going or whatever, or it's coming through different vents, you can cover this, cover your vents on the floor. So, and they're magnetic. So it sticks to your magnetic vent registers. This is what I use now. Very thin. However, you can take some double side or um glue uh tape good lord <laughs> a tape runner and you can just add you can just add some cardstock to the back of this to make it a little bit more stiff if you need it more stiff sometimes you don't sometimes you do it depends on what you're using it for the bigger this is then the more stiffness you'd probably want to add to it but if it's going to just be something that's going to be holding a a little um, die that's this size, then you don't probably need to add anything to the back of it. Cause like this is actually pretty stiff and this is the same thing. So just think about that. But these can be, uh, you can get these on Amazon, but you, and there's only three of them in here, but they are eight inches wide by 15 inches long. So you can cut them down to various sizes, but you can also get them on, you can get them on Amazon, but you also, I think I got these from like Home Depot or, um, Lowe's. I price shopped. Um, so that's where it happened to be cheapest. And I needed them like ASAP. <laughs> so I needed someplace that was local. All right. I'm going to just go through these really quick. So the other thing that I have in here is the other Sizzix little pockets. You know, those little pockets you guys get. Oh, and this was a different tape that I used. Purple tape. That works too, but it's not as, um, it's not as sticky. So I, and you can't see through it. That was the other thing I didn't like about the purple tape. And that's why I kind of went to the clear tape. These little pockets that you get from Sizzix, these fit in here perfectly. So you can keep your stuff nice and organized in the little pockets. Now, this is something I was doing when I have stuff like this. However, I ended up finding... ended up finding two pocket envelope pages. They fit basically envelopes. So if I wanted to, I could take this one out of here and replace it with this one. The only downside is that this one's like sticks out a lot. This one was just a full sheet protector. That's another one that you'll use a lot because you're going to have stuff that's going to be, you know, big you're going to, you know, you're not, there's really nothing you can put it in except for a normal sheet protector. <clears throat> I just get a pack of like a big old box of sheet protectors. And again, you're going to do the same thing. Make a little flappy on some tape and stick it on the top because again, you don't want stuff flying out of it, but this is what it was. And so to make it so that it didn't extend all the way out, cause I didn't need it to need it to, I just stapled it closed and then trimmed it off. <laughs> because I didn't like it sticking out so much. Um, and then here I just stapled or staples down the middle to make a little divider. These stay in pretty well, so I don't have to worry about them flying out. So I didn't put the little tape across the top, but if they did, I would put a tape across the top. Now these, I have to be a little bit careful. Pink Fresh Studios, they actually have a magnetic sheet in, in between them. Um, so they have their own magnetic sheet. Otherwise, I would have put them on magnets myself. They stay pretty well, so I don't change it up. Very cool, Cheryl. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not. All right, so here we keep going. So I've got all kinds of other dies, my frames, all the stuff that I use. And then I have like all my, my nesting dies, my infinity dies, all the different dies. 
So then here we've got like Fun Stampers Journey ones. These are big. Again, I just put it in a sheet protector and then stapled it and cut it off. And then there's two of them actually in here. So this is double-sided. Some of these two, I was doing the backside. You can do the backside, but it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get to the dies when they're like that, especially if it's this one. You know, you have to, I don't always look there. That's the other problem. You can't put it on the back of this. You can kind of put it on the back of the one, you know, if the one has the cover on it, the paper on it, it doesn't really stick very well. But this one is so-so. It's definitely, there is a definitely a magnetic side to the sheet versus a not so magnetic side. So, um, just know that it won't stick as well as the, the main side. I'm just going through and making sure there's nothing else in these. Pretty much all of these were done with the, uh, two pocket protectors. And then here's another one where this is just too big to go into a two pocket. And so it goes into a full sheet protector. All right. So that is, and this one's heavy. Just saying, these sheets are definitely heavy. This binder is definitely one of my heavier binders. And that is why it's as, you know, a two and a half inch. It's, it's a good, you want me to weigh it? Here, I can weigh it. <laughs> That's the other thing too that you have to be worried, you know, be um, aware of is your shelves that you're putting these on. I have shelves on my wall that are, um, anchored using like 70 pound, 75 pound, pound anchors and the shelves are rated for like 50 pounds. And so I'm very mindful of that and I try not to go over that. So let's see how much this one weighs. You're not going to see it, but I'll tell you 10 pounds, one ounce. This one's 10 pound, one ounces, 10 pounds. Hi, Mayhem. Um, Kathy, I actually have the heating tool and it sucked. <laughs> it did not work for me. I think my food saver, um, uh, vacuum sealer might've worked better. <laughs> it did not. I, I tried it and I know Nancy's tried it as well. And it just did not work. I'm going to leave the scale out because I'm sure we're going to want to waste some other ones too. Okay. So that's this one. The other one that I have that is very similar is... Oh, my word dies. I'm looking, hold on. Yeah, so my word dies would be the other binder because I used to have, was it my word dies? Hot foil, word, sentiments. Yeah, my word dies and my other dies that I just showed you used to be in the same binder. And then of course I got way too much and I had to split them out. Um... Yeah, the fuse tool. Yep, I have that. I can show it to you. I've tried it. It didn't work for crap. It came apart. It wasn't a strong enough bond. It wasn't um, like a wide enough bond. So yeah, I think it's the fuse tool. <laughs> That's right. I work out. All right. So this is my word dies. So that's exactly what it is. It's words. So I've got some stuff in the front here because I used to do the same thing like I did with my, um, the binder you just saw, where I would just put a bunch of stuff on one page, you know, on one, one sheet. But then I started becoming an influencer and I kind of needed to remember where my stuff came from and the backings. So I was trying to keep the paperwork with the dies. And so at the beginning, I was just throwing stuff in the front here and then sorting it and, and filing it away over here. So I've kind of been a little bit different, expanding it a little bit more, keeping the paperwork with it if I can, which takes up more space, but it is what it is. So just going through here, again, you're just going to see um, same one, two pockets. Now here, because you've got smaller, um, paperwork, packaging, etc., 
then you're going to not need such bigger pockets. So this is the four pocket. <clears throat> so again, BCW, this is the four pocket page. I need to get a drink. Okay, so this is the four pocket page. So you got um, four by five and a half pocket sizes. These, I have them extending out because they're light. They don't really fly out so much. This one has a tape because it's small and it might. Um, I really could probably put this one into a smaller pocket, but at the time it is what it is. So these are all in little four pockets. They fit really well for these. And then we got two pockets. I've got all my, again, the Sizzix. I don't have them in the little pockets because I actually put them on a magnetic sheet. Cause you know, alphabets suck when you're trying to find letters and looking at them from backwards also sucks when you're trying to figure out what letter it is. So I put it on, oh, let me show you something else I use. These are the Avery L um, stamp pockets. So they come, you can get, and again, on Amazon shop, I don't know if Nancy put these in the organizational section or not, but she should, she will. So these are, these are the Avery L large stamp and die storage. They come in three different sizes with the package that I get. So there's a small, this is the, these are the large. So these must be extra large. Yeah. So there's an extra large size, extra large. This is the large. And then there's a small, which is the small, okay? So these are by Avery L. They're really handy to keep your stuff together when you like separate it out or you don't wanna play with the cellophane thing or the cellophane thing, you know, rips open. So what I do with this, because these, are too big to fit in my pockets. That's how big they are. That's how big I need it. So I literally just put it in there and I cut it off. And now it fits perfectly in my pocket. Now with this, this is my alphabet one, like I said, alphabets suck. So what I did was I laid them all out and then I took a silver Sharpie or whatever and I wrote what the letters were because God knows looking at this, that does not look like an A. So I need it. And this is both alpha, the uppercase and lowercase. So the uppercase is on the backside. And again, it's, they're all noted. Okay, Jennifer, we'll keep that in mind and know that you're not yelling at us if we see you uh, um, type in all caps. So Kathy Greer asked, do I organize by topic or company? So I organize by topic or subject, I guess. Like I have my word dies in one binder. I have my sentiment like banners and frames in another binder, die cuts in another binder. I have my sympathy stamps, you know, together. I have um, hot foil stamps together. However, I am a guest designer on uh, Catherine Pooler. So I have a lot of her stuff and I decided to put everything for Catherine Pooler into their own binders. So nothing Catherine Pooler is going to be in here. It's all going to be in the other binders. Um, same, I think I'm going to do the same thing, even though I'm not like on the design team or anything for Pink Fresh Studios. I just have a lot of their stuff. And so I'm starting to think maybe I just need to put all their stuff in one binder. Um, I do have blue net rubber stamps all in one binder and you'll see why there's a reason for that. So it just really depends on how you use your stuff, whatever works to help you find your stuff. That's how you want to organize it pretty much. Um, thank you, Nancy. I didn't get a chance to put, I didn't want to stop and put the links in the description. I will add them after the fact. So these are mostly all, oh, this is the way I used to do it. 
So this is, these are sentiments uh, or word dies. And, you know, looking at the word die, you're like, okay, what does that really look like? So I used to go and I would cut it out and, you know, stick it to a piece of paper. And then behind this, this also helps my dies stay on the magnetic sheet because they're all right here. So these are all the ones that are all here. The only downside then is, and this is why these are over here, is because some of these are these. I started doing them this way, which is okay because sometimes I'll come in here like, where did I do it? I know some of these, I actually have the die cuts in here. I haven't used these lately, but if I do, I'm starting to put the die cuts in here so that you can see. And I think I didn't, oh, because these, this is what it looks like. This is exactly what it looks like. Same size. This is actual size. So that's why I didn't do it to these. But if it's like way off from, you know, like this is an actual size. <laughs> so I actually, you know, did this so that I could see what it actually looks like. And these are pretty snug in here. Like they're snug. So I don't have the thing, the tape on the tops. You might want to, the thing with the tape too, it also helps this from ripping because it's giving support right here. And it's not pulling, you know, it's not pulling on this pocket. So these are all my, so like this one, I actually found the paperwork for this one, but this is the Concord Ninth Big. Concord and Ninth Big Thanks die. So I have all of these in here. Like I said, this is the way I used to organize it. Don't really do it that way anymore. I'm kind of going towards this more. And like this one, actually. So this one has an example. So this is the die. And this is what it looks like. So I can tell. And this is glued on to the back of the magnetic sheet. So that's the other thing too. So if this is laying around and there's no die attached to it, then I know what it is. <laughs> but I have it facing up so that I know that's what it is. And then these, yeah, I need to do these. So, okay. Do you have a master list of all? <laughs> no, Jim. I started, um, I can't remember what the app is called. It's on the phone that I'm using to record right now. I think I told Jerry what it was. I don't know if she remembers, but I had an app where I was recording like all my craft supplies. And then you get to a point where you just buy way too much stuff one time and then it's like overwhelming and you can't keep track of it anymore. So no, I don't. All right. I'm going to jump over to my sentiment like, and clip art binders. These are my light. Oh, hold on. Let me weigh this one. Where was it? Um, word dies. This one's definitely not as, um, heavy, but it's not as thick either. Where's my scale behind me? No, it's not Evernote. Evernote is one, but the problem with Evernote is that if you don't pay for it, it's very limited on where you can access it. There's another one. So this one's just under six pounds. So this one's not that bad. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me. No, not air note. Hold on. Let me see. Air table. You're close. It's called air table. Air table is really nice. It's a database. You can access it online. It's an app um, for your phone. So you can access it anywhere. So it's really great because then if you're doing a lot of input and you want to have like a computer or a tablet or, you know, something, you can do it from there. You can do it from your phone. It, it's just, it's a really good, and you can include pictures, um, notes, you can tag stuff. It's really good. It's very comprehensive. My screen like froze for a second. Okay. Um, Yes, Airtable. I used to use Airtable. <laughs> okay, so these are my die cuts. I call it a die cuts. These are my 
already cut out sentiments and stuff like that. I got my binders just for you guys, for your info. I did price shopping again. Um, Sam's Club is where I got mine for the cheapest, the best price that I could find. You want D-ring binders too. You don't want round ring. D-ring binders are what you want. Um, D-ring. Hold on. I'm looking for my ruler because this is a three and a half inch binder. This does not weigh hardly anything and it's pretty full. Yeah, if you don't pay for Evernote, you can only use it on one device. I used to pay for it, and then they jacked up the price, and it was ridiculous, and I'm just like, nope, no more. So this one's just over three pounds. This is a very light, bi light binder. <laughs> Show us the goods in that binder. Okay, so I have two different die cut binders. I have one because I had to break them up because they got too much. I could have probably put this in a five inch binder if I wanted to, but I used what I had. And so three and a half inch binder, what it was. So this one's got die cut clip art, happy birthday, happy, foiled sentiments, celebrate and hooray. Now, the thing I love about these labels is that if for some reason I move something out of this binder and put it in a different binder, this is very easy for me to fix, to change, to print, whatever. It's not like I have to do anything complicated. I literally just go into the Word document, fix it, print it, and scan and cut it. Or if I really wanted to, I could just fussy cut it, but you know me. I don't like the F word. Okay, so this one's got like just miscellaneous die cuts. So this is just like stuff. This is a nine pocket. This one is actually... I have a different, this is something I had from my son's Pokemon collection days. And so that's all this is. It's a nine pocket collector card, but their BCW does have nine pocket. I already used them all. Um, this was something I literally found in my husband's stash. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I can use these rather than buy some more. So that's what these are. They're really great for little die cuts. You can put um, tape on these. You'll see that I do have tape on some of these. It just depends. On, yeah, baseball card holder. Thank you. Or, yeah, collector card holder. Um, it just depends on the weight of the item. Like, this stuff isn't going to fly out. So, I'm good. But if you get more stuff in here, stuff's going to fly out. You can also put stuff in little Ziplocs if that works for you and just shove them in here. This one is a nine pocket. So, that is... I mean, a six pocket. I can't count. Where's my six pocket? Okay, we did a four pocket. We did that one. Oh, there it is. I see 25, and I'm like, that's not right. This is the, it's 25. There's 25 of them in here. So stupid. So this is a different brand, but this is a six pocket. So it's a little bit different. It's um, three and a half by three and a half inch. And you don't have to get this many different, but it just happened to work for me to get different sizes. And so this is what this is. And we've got, these are excess die cuts that I cut out and just threw them in here so that I have them. And they're easy to see. That's my biggest problem is I used to store them differently. <clears throat> I used to store them in this. This is like a four by six photo holder. And I literally used to have like categories. But then as you go through these, you have to then figure out and you have to sort through all the stuff then that's in here. So it's not easy to see what exactly is in here. Yes, this takes up a little bit more room, maybe. But I can see everything and I can flip through here and go, oh, I want to use those. And I have all the different colors, What you know, like whatever I did. So these are a bunch of the foiled sentiments. Like these are flipping out. So these need a little, these need to have tape. <laughs> I didn't think they would do that, but they are. So definitely need to put them either in a little Ziploc or put them in tape, um, tape them shut. This one is a 20 pocket page. This is for coin collectors. 
I needed something for really small sentiments. So this is a 20 pocket page. Again, BCW. <laughs> I took my son's baseball pockets too. <clears throat> Ink swatches. Um, speaking of ink swatches, this is for my Distress Oxide daubers. I did the same thing. So these are all my da daubers. They used to be stored on the back of my ink pads and I took them off. And this is where they store now. So if I need specific colors, I come in here and I grab the daubers for my Distress Oxides. So that's per another way that you can use these. Okay, so again, sentiments galore. These are all stored by um, the sentiment itself. You, I've also seen people store them by color. So like I have, when you do these sentiments, this is Pink Fresh Studios um, Perfect Sentiments. And it's a sentiment sheet with different sentiments and you do it all at once. So that's why you're going to have red one of all of them. You're going to have basically one color of every single one of these sentiments. So I've seen, I think Tracy stores her sentiments by color because maybe that's what she's looking for when she wants a card She's got a card that has, you know, purple on it, you know, Tracy, then you're going to, you know, she wants a sentiment that matches. So she wants to go by color. I, on the other hand, want it by what it says. And then I can go through literally and just pull them all out and go, which one looks what, you know, what color will looks best with what I'm doing. And that's the other great thing about having these already done is that you literally can just take a card. Like I just did a card. So at some point, I just finished this one and at some point I'm going to want to put a sentiment on this. I don't like putting sentiments on my cards if I don't have a purpose for it because I want to be able to use it for whatever that purpose is. <laughs> so this one's going to stay blank until I need a sentiment. And when I need a sentiment, I'll come in here. I'll know what I need it for and I will go to that sentiment and I will then try and find a color that matches my card. So then... These are all the different ones. This is also hot foil. So the foiled ones are all in here. These are all hot foil. This is toner foil, hot foil, hot foil. So you got some different ones. So then you have celebrate. So these are ones that I did on my scan and cut. I created them using fonts and I cut them out. And these are other die cuts. So here's the hooray. There's happy and birthday. You've got happy birthday, anniversary. Anniversary, I don't think is listed on here. Um, this is miscellaneous. Actually, I think there's, yeah, I think those all say anniversary. And then, but I don't have that on the label, so that's probably one that I could add. Here's my happies that go with like the little birthdays. You can do happy and then birthday. Happy. Happy birthday. Again, these are ones that I did on the scan and cut. I created them. These are die cuts. That's a stamp set. Die cuts. So that's all my... So I have a lot of happy birthday stamps. Or I mean die cuts. And then other stuff. Okay. <laughs> Tracy. Love purple sentiments. Yes. Um, Just checking comments <laughs> all right so that is my die cut with my happy birthdays and then the other one that I have is let's see I think this one's a three and a half as well oops yeah so this is a three and a half inch binder as well and this one's got then thinking of you sympathy thank you lovely friend and hello so this one has my so our FSC VIP did some um, tailored expressions, uh, cuts and stuff, and gave me, like, this is what's in here. So that's why it's organized like this. So I can come in here and go, okay, what do I have? So there might be birthday stuff in here, but this is just how I decided to organize it. Same with these. These are different ones that were given. And then we've got all kinds of thinking of you. Okay, Tracy, thank you for stopping by. 
so these are um these are hot foil actually toner foiled these are toner printed but they're not foiled yet um we've got other ones oh so this is a three pocket this is just a weird one but it works really well for like really long sentiments and so this is again i think i bought like a 25 pack of these 20 pack and i've had this one for years this one i've had for a while i haven't used a lot of them but they definitely you know they have their purpose so for the longer ones because this is i don't think it says on here no it is in the um amazon shop though all right so this is and i have a lot of thanks lots and lots of thanks and then here's that two pocket one that i showed in the very beginning and it was great for the really big i don't think yeah i think it would have stuck out if i had used put this thing thanks in one of these pockets so that's why i didn't use it so that ended up being and then i put two staples down at the bottom so that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom because i you know don't want to have to dig deep into that pocket <laughs> here's another one of the three pockets so those worked and that's you it just says you okay moving on let me weigh this one just out of curiosity did i already weigh this one i think i already weighed this one i don't remember i know i weighed the other one oh this one's just over two pounds oh well, a little under three pounds actually so it's about the same as the other one all right so now put this away and it's very easy it's very easy to grab something get it out go through it and put it away so this is a i think it's a five inch binder i could be wrong it could be six it's a five inch binder. This is one of the biggest binders that I have. Oh, speaking of the um, staples. So the other thing that I had and this, oh, you're gonna think it's funny, but I actually had this from uh, sewing. So I used, it's dusty, it sits on the top of my shelf. So this, um, it's a book binding stapler so that it's deep. You can go and you can adjust it to however, you know, if you wanted to do the same depth every single time. The reason why I had this was for sewing though. I used to sew my kids scout uniforms and trying to put um, patches on a Girl Scout or Boy Scout vest. I used to staple them so that they wouldn't move and I could place them all and then go and sew them and take the staples out. So this was great to get anywhere on the vest this is also great for stuff where you need to get you know deeper than a big stapler might be able to just you don't have to go invest in one of these i'm just letting you know how i did mine okay <laughs> all right so long reach stapler yes so this is my blue knight rubber stamps binder this binder does not weigh a lot even though it's a five inch binder because it's all red rubber stamps. There's no dyes in here. It's just all red rubber stamps. Five point three pounds. So it's not that heavy at all. And this has these. I actually cut down. I cut the the cards so that they fit into this is a regular eight and a half by 11 it has been trimmed hasn't been anything done to the ends of it and i trimmed these down just enough so that they would fit in here i don't think i did not have the two pocket i didn't have these at the time i just worked with what i had i wonder if they would fit because it can be a little bit of a bugger to get them out because you got to get them past that little staple at the top. There we go. So let's see if they would fit now. And I kept them in their pocket. I actually taped it over or folded it over. In this case, I folded it over 
because then this doesn't rub up against the pocket and have give you resistance when you're putting stuff in and out. So let's see. Yeah, that's a very, it fits. Hmm, maybe I'll switch them over, but eh, I probably don't need to. But it fits. So it's the same size. I basically created my own. So that's what this is. So again, the only good, the only upside to using that other pocket would be that it wouldn't catch on the staples. And I can take these staples out and I can still use this as a sheet protector, you know, for other stamps. So these are all my Blue Knight rubber stamps. Pretty much they come for the most part. Like this one is not down the middle. I actually made more space on this side for this one. And this is a smaller one on this side. So, you know, you have that flexibility too. This one, I couldn't trim it down, I don't think, or didn't want to maybe. The other thing I do sometimes with these, like this one's floating or in here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put it over here and I'll add staples right here so that it stays to the outside. Or I'll put it here and then just cut that off. So just depending on how you want to organize your stuff. But yeah, these are all my blue nights. Pretty much two per page. I'm glad you're learning a lot. Okay. So that would be why you would want to use a five inch binder. I wouldn't recommend using a five inch binder for anything that has dyes in it though. Just saying. Okay. So the other thing I have then is, so like, here's my hot foil. One of them. I'm, I have two and a half. <laughs> This is where I think I'm going to be moving my Pinkfresh Studio stuff out to a separate um, binder. Because this has got, this has sentiments and banners. This one's heavy. This one's six pounds. So it's definitely not even, in my dies, my sentiment dies are the heaviest thus far. Because they're more condensed and stuff. So this is my hot foil stuff. So hot foil obviously are big old foil plates. And this isn't even everything I have. I've got a lot of stuff that I have out that I want to play with that I haven't filed away yet. So these are all my hot foil stuff. So these are great for what I do here. It's too tall on its own to fit in here. So I just fold it over and I stick it back in its little cellophane. Or I could have put this into one of these and cut off the top, um, which if this starts ripping, then I will. But I added the magnetic sheets in here. These are just pieces that I had and I just used double-sided or um, a tape runner and I just plopped them on here. So now as I'm, that's what I usually do with, I hate the tape that, you know, the sticky tape that holds down these stupid dies. So now I have everything I need. And this is the original paperwork. And I have everything I need. I can use my dies and I can put them all back. And, and again, if this, like, again, I don't work with the bottom of these stupid things. I just cut off the top, keep that, and then I can put it away. And this one's kind of snug, so it's not falling out. Same, exactly the same. I take it off of all the glue. Stick it down on a magnetic sheet. Because the other thing, too, is that when I'm using this, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take these off and then I might stick this back in here so I don't lose this. And then you got the stupid stickers or the, the glue, you know, the the glue tape or whatever um, that sticks to this. And it's just a pain. So I get rid of the tape as soon as I can. So most of these... Now, the other thing I did, too, like, this one shows what these say. These did not. These were a little annoying because, and ugh, my tape, because the thing is wider than, um, it sits taller than the pocket, my tape sticks to it, which is fine because this is one of those, Ellen, um, this is one of these pockets, so it's very sturdy. But this one didn't come with anything that said what these were. So you're looking at this going, what the heck do those say? So I foiled them. And so now I know this is what it says. <laughs> Put them in their little pocket. 
put it on its magnetic sheet and file it away. And then I just put them in here so that I can see what they look like. And this one just ripped. So I'm going to fix it by adding just a piece of tape. And usually once I add a piece of tape to it, it doesn't rip again. And you can't see it. So it's all good. So this is all. And then this is another one. I have not moved these to a magnetic sheet probably because I haven't used this one very much yet. Um, but like this one, I moved it. This one. Nope. Haven't used this one yet. This one's on a magnetic sheet. This is a magnetic sheet. That one's on a magnetic sheet. So, and then we get into the other ones that are smaller. So we're in the four pockets and you can see all the different. So as this one says, this is my sentiments and banners. So do I have banners and yeah, well, there's some banners and stuff in here like that. And then do I have banners in the front? I guess I'm just talking about like those banners and stuff. So that's what this what's in this one. And then the other one, ugh, this one's heavier and this one's busting out of its seams. And that's why I think I need to split out my pink fresh because I have a lot more of this type and I'll show you in a second after I wait. Um, that can't fit in here anymore. So I'm gonna have to put it into another binder. So this one's almost 10 pounds. Still hasn't hit my sentiments and frames one though. That one's still the winner. So this one is large plates, frames, Halloween, and Christmas. So this one has, so like my Pink for Studios, this is that set, one of my favorites. And this is another one of those pockets, Adriel pockets, within pockets. So this has all of this together. And so I chose to store it together because I'm probably going to use this as a hot foil plate with the rest of it almost always. I pro and it, so that's why it's stored here. Technically, it's a stamp, a stencil, and dies and stuff. But for me, I know that I'm going to come to my hot foil stuff looking for this, this specific set. And so all of the ones that I got like this recently. So there's this one. And then there's this one, same thing. It's got the same four pieces. And then I've got my hot foil plates. Now this I don't have on a magnetic sheet because I really didn't need to. It's big enough, it's by itself, it's in a little pocket, it's fine. It, it's, I just, my hot, my plates, I really didn't need to waste the sheet of mag, the magnetic sheet. And then I've got, and then this is the one I was talking about earlier with the sentiments. So these sentiments, I don't have, it comes in the same situation where you can get like a stencil and everything. I don't have the stencil because I wasn't going to stamp those. I just wanted to use it as hot foil. So these are all my, so my bigger plates. Again, they fit perfect in the two pocket. You just fold it over. It's on a little magnetic sheet. Get rid of the tape. These are the bigger plates. So again, I just stapled it down the edge, cut it off because it's just, I only need it to be big enough to hold that. This one worked out perfect because there's two of them. Again, you have the flexibility of making the pockets whatever size you want when you do, you know, the sheet protector, the eight and a half by 11 sheet protector. Again, what I told you guys, this one, I didn't want flying around in the pocket. So I stapled it down the side right here so that it stays out. I didn't want everything towards the middle because it starts getting really thicker. So you kind of want to even stuff out. See, and then this one's to the inside. And then this is that three pocket one for some weird shaped, you know, weird sizes. These are my frames, as it says. So this is what it refers to as frames. I have a lot of frames. I haven't used these lately. I first used these when I had my go press and foil and they didn't work very well at all. I have not used them since I got the foil press. So I'm kind of looking forward to using these again because it was a pain in the butt with the go press and foil. So and then I have some corner frames. 
and then I have actual like these cut out and um, foil and then this is my Halloween and Christmas so I only have a few I actually just ordered um, I think I finally ordered this um, I don't think I filed it uh, the spider web I'm not sure I thought I did and then Christmas I did get some more Christmas stuff so that'll go in here my Christmas stuff might go in its own binder a small like one inch binder or something like that because I really don't even like all my Christmas stuff is in another room like all my binders for my Christmas stuff I don't even have it in the same room because I don't use it but for one time a year um yep I seems to save a mess by using the Avery pockets or original pockets than the pages yes yeah, if the original pockets can hold up, use them. If they don't, get the Avery pockets. I actually didn't get the Avery pockets until recently. Um, because then I started, you know, repurposing, repackaging and stuff. All right, let me see if there's anything. I don't really think there's anything else. I mean, I have a bunch of other binders, but it's pretty much the same thing. So let me just look at my thing. I talked about magnetic sheets. How heavy um is like I said before how heavy is up to you guys as to uh how much you put in it so that's your decision as to how heavy you want it if it's too heavy put it in a smaller binder and break it up I'm just moving my phone over no I don't put my stencils in a binder unless I said it in the beginning. So this is my Southwestern Desert. So it's got die cuts, stencils, stamps, dies, background stamps, and embossing folders. Because I have such a small amount of Southwest and, Des Southwest and Desert items, I decided to put these all in one binder. So a die cut that I did a while back, a stencil, some dies, some stamps, some more stamps, more stamps, and background stamps, and embossing folders. So these are specific to Southwestern, and so I chose to pull them out of where I normally store my, store my stencils and or stamps or whatever because they were very specific. Um, so All my stencils currently are in this because I don't have, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a stencil queen. That's Tracy. So that is where I have all my stencils and there's really no rhyme or reason. There's just, they're all just in here. Um, except for my Catherine Pooler stuff is not in here anymore. That is in another binder. Cause I decided I lied. Why is my stuff in here? These shouldn't be in here. <laughs> um, yeah. All my other stuff is in. My Catherine Pooler stuff is all in one binder. Oh, two, three binders, I think, actually. So those are all my stencils. <clears throat> this is where all my miscellaneous background stamps are stored. This has actually been cut down a lot because... I had taken out all of my Catherine Pooler background stamps and put them into another, like I said, a binder. So these are all my other ones, my non Catherine Pooler ones. This used to be full. So that just goes to show you how many Catherine Pooler ones I have. I used to have my stencils in here too, which I might be able to put those back in here again because I had so many background stamps. I had to break it up into two, two containers for stencils and background stamps. <clears throat> embossing folders I knew you guys were going to ask about that I use these art bins for a lot of stuff embossing folders is one of them that I found seems to work the best this thing weighs a lot I don't store it anywhere but the floor because it weighs a lot um, I don't know I think my scale will do 50 pounds so let's see yeah, 50 pounds. I don't think it weighs 50 pounds. I'm going to put it up this way. 
Oops, it didn't zero out. Hold on. Did you break? Did I break it? There we go. 17, over, almost 18 pounds <clears throat> is this. And this is only two thirds of my embossing folders. So this is how I store them. This is called a Super Satchel Double Deep Art Bin. You can get it at Joann's. You can get it on um, Amazon. They also have some, a different variation of these in uh, Walmart. I found them. But this is how I store them. These are stored by type, like design. So I have like all of my wood grain ones or wood, you know, tree, um, bricks, uh, geometric, you know, like um, gears and stuff like that. And then I have art deco kind of stuff is all together. I have my damask ones. I don't think are in here. Like my, let's see, miscellaneous like sky stars. Um, these are like swirls. I have to store these sideways because they don't fit um, going upright. So it kind of messes things up a little bit, but they fit in, they, they fit. So these are like all my swirls and stuff. Uh, and then these are all my leaves. So I kind of have like everything grouped together. Like these are all my little impresslets that I have. Um, these are just weird little emojis. These are all my spellbinders cut and emboss ones. Um, and then I have like patterns. So <laughs> you thought I said squirrels. Sorry, I just hit my camera. So this is, like I said, two thirds of them. And then what I had to do because I had too many and I like it because I can grab that by the handle and it doesn't, you know, it, it holds. It's a good sturdy box. This one is the rest of them. So this is the same thing, but it's a half size. So this has all my floral stuff in it. Literally all my floral stuff. That's all this in here is just some type of floral. So this got its own container. Floral, floral, floral 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 oh christmas sorry that's holidays back here so here's um halloween and then christmas halloween and christmas always get put into their own little things i love swirls and flourishes yes swirls not squirrels <laughs> so that's how i store my embossing folders for now and then when I get too many, I kind of go through my embossing folders and then I just kind of get rid of some <laughs> because I don't really want to get into a, a double sided. This one's bigger, wider. This holds six by six papers on each side. The other one doesn't hold. It's a little bit different sized um, than, than that. All right. Um, I don't know how many embossing folders I own. I... Um, I counted them at one point a while back. I don't remember how many there were though. I don't remember. I'm looking at comments. Do I swatch all my inks? Um, so yes, and so the way I swatch my inks is I have, this is called a happy planner or a, I'm drawing a blank. I forget what it's called, the type of planner it's called, but it's. Cheryl, um, you can buy a punch that can, hole punch 
your papers and then you can add stuff. So this is what I use. I build my swatch sheets. So I have most of my stuff swatched in here. This also helps me determine like what I have. Um, but then I also will swatch them. I prefer, again, this goes down to how you use your stuff. I can show you my inks. Um, this shows, this goes to where you show, where you use your stuff. So for example, these are my Versafine Claire inks. I found, I do have them swatch in here. There's a sheet in here for them. That's not them. I'm trying to find it now. There it is. So this is my Versafine Claire. This is all there is, and I have them all. So there's 24 of them. And so this is easy for me to see, like, the colors on the paper. But I need to see the colors on the ink pads. And for the most part, like Purple Delight, where are you? Purple Delight. I mean, I swatch this on label paper. So it is as true to the color. So if you look, you know, like this to this, it's the same color. So it's easier for me to see this, like, and know, oh, I want this color. So I'm going to swatch it out the way I, you know, so that I can tell, like, this is the true color of it. This is in one of those, it's not a, it's, a, it's basically a generic super satchel, but it's not the double deep. It's just the regular depth. I actually got like a four pack of these at Sam's Club. So these work out perfect. They're a little bit, I think it's a little bit shorter than um, the art bin super satchel, but this worked out perfect. These are all my ombre inks, if you guys are wondering. So these are all my Hero Arts ombres. I don't have those swatched out because that's kind of hard to swatch those out <laughs> and it kind of shows you what they are and actually I lied I do have some of them swatched out but then I got more wait do I have more this might be all of them yeah this may be all of them so I, I lied I did swatch them out I just forgot that it was in here and then these are my refills for my for these because I don't have very many they're kind of hard to come by um do I set the bin flat or on the end? I store it just like this. It sits on a shelf. And um, Arc from Staples, Jim, yes. But it's a disc planner. I swear to God, when I try and think of something, it's just not there. But when I stop thinking about it, boom. So a disc planner is what that is. These are little discs that you can put and change to different sizes and stuff. And I... Um, like it because you can add and remove pages and they come in different sizes, like I said. So that is what I use for my swatching. And then like I have this size for work, which is great. You can buy different covers. Um, I have another one that that's, that is that size for crafting as well. I keep notes and stuff in, but it's a disc planner. Um, happy planner is a common one, but <clears throat> arc does have, um, Staples has one that's called ARC, but I found that one to be kind of pricey. So this is how I store my Catherine Pooler inks. <clears throat> and we're almost done. So, like I said, this one is just a little bit ugh, shorter than this, the official Super Satchel. Um, it might be a little smaller. Yeah, it's a tiny bit smaller too. So I use this one for my Catherine Pooler inks. I use it for my Distress Oxides. And then I use the other one because I don't need something um, as tall, deep. This is like the first one I showed you that had my Versafine Claire. This one has my sparkle pots and it has everything swatched out so I can see. So I have a tendency, if I can't swatch it on the actual stuff, I'll keep the 
um, swatch sheets with the inks. And I do the same thing with this. This is my this is my distress oxides. So I have everything up top here, like printed out. But then I also have a swatch, but this isn't up to date. So I'd have to redo it all because, you know, they add. But I do have the labels that were up on top. I have them attached. And these, I also have same labels on the back side that this is what I swatched. So I can kind of tell like, yeah, that doesn't look exactly. Looks more like that is what it should be. But that's how I have them because they're easy to read. So that's my Distress Oxides. Yes, I was talking about the Happy Planners. Because that's what I have. And then I think Jim was referring to the, the ARC. Oh, ARC has the punch. Yeah, Happy Planner has the punch too. So, and yeah, you can always get um, Hobby Lobby. Michaels. Michaels has the... Happy planners and you can get like old ones and use just the the cover and the discs and all that stuff and you know okay so these are my Catherine Pooler inks they are organized by collection so I have the party collection is up here and then I have my neutrals and then I have the spa collection down here and so I have all of these um I have the new labels and I also have my old swatch labels. So you can see that they're pretty close to, like this is the old cover and the, you know, they've, they've switched manufacturers that are, or they've done something so that this color is more closely to what it should be. And so they did new labels that are more closely to what the actual ink looks like. And it is, cause that is the label now. And that is what I did. A long time ago and so I did Mandarin Spice S is for spa and then Catherine Pooler but all my Catherine Pooler stuff is all in one place now but I do also have again this is no longer up to date but if I kind of want to look at something I did the original swatch and I keep it in the lid so all right that's all I got guys I think I answered all your questions I know I covered a lot but that's how I store all my stuff. A lot of you ask. Is there anything else you'd like to see before I sign off? Yeah, they're not the, yeah, they're single super satchels. Oh, the refills are in the same container it says the exact the refills for my Catherine oh I'll go get it hold on it's in another room so my refills for my like most used inks, so like my black, my Versafine Claire Nocturne, um, this is kept in a little drawer, little organizer off to the side, and the refills for this are stored with that, so that I have them all in the same spot. Yes, Nancy's going live at 8, so what time... Okay, so that's five, six, that's five o'clock my time. Okay, we're good. This is where I store all my refills right now. I have all the refills for the Distress Oxide. Those are all right here. Again, I actually put the swatch chart in here because that's the order they are in. So if I need one, that's where they're at. My Catherine Pooler, she always sells them in collections or, you know, releases or whatever. So they now come with labels that are the color of the ink but before they did not so they're in bags that have the cheat sheet and then i have some distress oxide inks 
I don't, I have my Distress Oxide mini pads, ink pad collection that I'm selling because I don't use them anymore. But I wanted to keep these, just the, the inks, if I ever wanted to do something with just ink. You're welcome, Barbara. Um, I store my ink pads basically sideways because they're stored sideways in the storage containers. They're stored like this on the side and they get put on the shelf that way. You're welcome, Jerry. You're welcome, Meg. Any other questions? Alrighty. Well, you're welcome, Pam. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to sign off then. I hope this was informative. Um, if you have any questions, you know, absolutely leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Um, maybe I'll do another video at some point for whatever reason to follow up. But I think, uh, I think we got everything covered. Yep. Don't forget Nancy's going live tonight, eight o'clock Eastern. Thanks everybody. Bye.